As some folks may know, we're now at the K entrance, and I'm continuing to walk uh, east here. As uh, some folks may know, the Concord police, during kind of what seemed like must have been unauthorized training in a bank building that was under construction, not quite completed or open yet, um, uh, is that up on Loudon Road? No, I think it's on 106. It's a bank building. It's a credit union. And it was a police officer shot another police officer during an impromptu training exercise they were having, presumably while they were working um, at that time. All right, so now we're at the M entrance of the school. Well, I'm not at the entrance itself. I'm at the, in the road outside of where the M entrance is visible. And nothing going on. Hard to tell from the glare off the sun if there's any police, anyone over there. It's like maintenance workers and uh, maybe school staff with red shirts on. Pretty low key. Alright, so there's the first clearly marked vehicle and officer sighting. Dressed interesting. Looks like they have Irving coffee cups, or at least one of them did.
Hello. Doing well. Doing well. Ryan, nice to meet you. What's your name? Ryan. Hey, Ryan, I'm Garrett. Garrett, how you doing, Garrett? Shout about today? Yes, I heard there was a training exercise going on here at the high school. You're, uh, you'd be correct. Interesting. Uh, Garrett, I know your last name. How do I know your last name? Uh, out from uh -huh. Keene? I was in Keene for several years. Well, three years. For the, uh... The, uh... Things with the, uh... Pay stations there, right? Robin Hood of Keene, yes, filling yes. the parking meters. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that's actually, from what I understand, still going on in the court system. Like, the, the law firm here out of Concord is still appealing back to the Supreme Court despite losing every time they've had it in any sort of hearing. So, yeah, I was very proud to be a part of that. It was fun while it was going on. Is it over? Or? There's still folks out in Keene that I believe do it from time to time. Okay. Um, I had been doing it probably the most frequently. I was out there a couple hours, almost like three or four days a week. Where did get the money for that? There were several donors at the time, uh, especially... Uh, maybe two or three people that really pitched in a lot to make sure we had dimes all the time and that it was worth our while so It was a lot of fun. We definitely got more publicity than we were expecting from that short like effort we had It's really just uh, me and my friends having fun on the streets So what brings you out today? Oh, exactly what I told you about. Oh, the training exercise? How'd you hear about that? Uh, a neighbor of mine actually told me. Oh, you back in Concord? Yep. Okay. I haven't seen you around. Oh, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm all over the place. Sometimes I'm downtown. I haven't been shocking as much as in the past, but now that the weather's nicer, it's it's very in, inspiring. Yeah. On 420, there were a lot of us out shocking in front of the state house. Okay. Yeah, all the videos are up from that. You can check those out. Okay. That's good. No, I didn't hear much on 420. I didn't hear anything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool that there doesn't really seem to be a response. I mean, I think a lot of the people that attend recognize, like, if you set up a booth or something, then that's when the city people come to after you with the permits and that sort of thing. But when people are just hanging out, you know, enjoying themselves, smoking what they choose to smoke, you know, it's a peaceful activity. Nobody gets bothered and everyone has a good time. Uh, so uh, you, how long have you been back in town? Uh, a few months now. Uh, I saw you on Keene about uh, the news from Keene. So, you know, yeah, friends. it was like a good two-year stretch. We were just consistently getting calls from national media about covering that story. And uh, like I said, it was a very fun project, stretch. Correct? Um, I mean, I have my own projects. Hello. Uh, for, for example, like I started freeconquer.org. It's a website. Okay. Um, it's been a few months since I've updated anything specifically there, but there's a lot of links to stuff that's still active. Um, I have a raw video channel. That's probably the thing I keep up the most. Like, I'll be posting what, what I get from walking around here today on there. And that's Free Conquered Raw on YouTube. If you just type in, like, Free Conquered Raw, it pops up. A lot of followers? Uh, surprisingly, for the short time it's been active, yes, because I had been posting all my raw content elsewhere for a few years. It was, like, a group videography channel. Um, other people became inactive with it, and the person who started it wanted to call it, like, wanted to just pretty much, like, finish it, I guess and like leave it as is rather than continuing to add. So that's why I started the Free Conquered one. I figured it coincided well with coming back here. And yeah, I got like 100 subscribers pretty quickly because I attended the, uh, the gathering outside of the Jerry DeLamis hearing. Um, I don't know if you follow much with the, what the federal government's doing, like with law enforcement, but... Um, no, I don't. I mean, I don't really know the guy or the circumstances of that case. It's just I thought that it's pretty excessive that like they're kidnapping this guy and like shipping him off to Nevada for a trial. And it's like, is he accused of hurting anyone? Like, they're not saying that anyone's been harmed. They're just saying, like, he organized things that, like, they didn't like. I mean, the, the government, I mean, historically has an example, a uh, history of going after organizers of large gatherings, like making examples of people when they don't want to see uh, different movements rising up. And I'm definitely not a supporter of everything that that guy's gotten behind, like, when I've looked into it. But that doesn't mean that, like... I feel like I gotta go out and other people should go out, especially with cameras and when the government's doing something like that to what is going on. I mean, it, it's actually uh, somewhat of a friendly reaction here because at the federal courthouse, I was filming outside through one of the windows there and they were flipping out about it, saying that I wasn't allowed to record, 
and like saying I wasn't allowed to be standing on their, that property there, even though there were plenty of other people standing there they weren't upset with, all because of this. Why seem angry about it? I know, that's, that's what's cool about it. You came up, you introduced yourself. I think that's a, it would be nice if all police had that reaction to it. And I find that over the years, I think uh, more people are understanding that, like reacting to a camera is never really a, ba a good idea. But. That camera makes me look skinny. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't have control over that. I just posted unedited. So, uh, working at all? What are you doing? Um, sometimes I'm in the kitchen at Area 23. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's uh, right across from the prison. It's kind of hard to spot because it's in the smokestack center. Is that where the brewery is? There's going to be a brewery there soon, hopefully. Okay. Um, yeah, like but that's more uh, yeah, they have like board games some days. I know there's a lot there. If anyone just shows up and wants to play, they can. Um, but yeah, there's like usually some sort of event every night. And uh, it's a good spot. How long have you been with the Concord Police? Uh, I'm in my 13th year. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's just slightly less than the number of years I'd lived in Concord because my family came here when I was seven. And uh, aside from those three years in Keene and two years in Florida when I was at school, uh, pretty much always lived here. And I think it's a great town, uh, especially like being in the capital is so central to everything. But it was it was pretty scary to see what went on in Manchester just two days ago. Um, that reaction to the the series of shootings. Uh, we got a guy who robbed the place. Places. Sure. Um, I, w I mean, my concern was whether or not the police were actually like going into or like violating anyone's homes or like, because especially at that hour, like people could be pretty terrified if someone's just showing up at their door at like three in the morning, four in the morning. Uh, but I'm, I mean, I didn't, I didn't personally hear of like people's homes being entered or anything. I've, I noticed, I saw lots of videos of police like aiming rifles at vehicles and things like that. But well, you got a guy out. Gun, shooting people. Mm -hmm. Gotta do what you gotta do. I'm glad he was taken in peacefully. And uh, from the mugshot, he didn't appear to have his face messed with. It, like, unfortunately, like the day before that, there was uh, the guy in Nashua. And uh, wow, I'm hoping that those officers, it's understood, like that's not acceptable to be people peacefully surrendering. Um, you know, I'm sure you saw some of that video too. There's quite an uproar from that, but I only saw it for a second. As you can see, I'm a mellow guy. I don't get too worked out. So mm -hmm. It's not worth it. So I think they're done here. I don't know. Yeah, I noticed that uh, most of when I walked around the building, like most of the entrances seemed pretty quiet. Nobody there. Some custodians and stuff. Uh, most of the activity seemed to be on the what used to be the language wing when I went to high school here. I'm not sure what it's used oh, for you now. High school here. Mm-hmm. So tell me about this Area 23. Area 23. Uh, it's been open just about a year now. I think June 4th is the anniversary date. I mean, I've only been there the past few months. Um, I'd been there once, like, around the time that it opened, and then when I moved back here, they had a spot in the kitchen. And I always love working with food. Um, so... Are you cook? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, food prep, cook, that sort of thing. But, uh... Yeah, hopefully there'll be a brewery there soon, but in the meantime, they've got all sorts of great craft beers. Most of them are local, either from New Hampshire, from Vermont, Mass, or Maine. 603? They got 603 there from time to time. It's always rotating out. There's uh, nine taps, and then usually a mead or a wine. What would you say? Oh, a mead? Yeah. It's like a fruity wine or something. Yeah, mead is almost like a, it's almost like a honey liqueur. It's like, I think, about 10% to 12%. So it's a little bit stronger, but you know you drink a little bit less of it, and it's very tasty. And uh, one thing about it is you can heat it up when it's cold. You can drink it cold when it's warm. It almost has a tea-like taste, I think. So you're uh, well informed. <laughs> yeah, even though I'm not the one serving the beer, it's you know it's good to be up on it. I overhear what the bartenders are always informing people about those things. So I try to always be learning in that aspect. You know, I actually went to school for criminal justice too. How did you? How'd that work out? Oh, it was great. I feel like I learned a lot. Um, a lot of people wanted me to go into law school, 
but I don't know. There's very, few, I feel like especially in this region, like it's uh, law itself, the practice of law seems very tedious and cumbersome. Um, but uh, yeah, I actually, I did two years at the tech here and then I did two years at USF in Sarasota. And I spent a lot of time at New College Sarasota, as well. Sarasota, Florida. Yeah. That's a great town. Sarasota's all right. Sarasota's a good place. I had a lot of fun there. Oh, I, I, yeah, those beaches are beautiful. I live in Sarasota if I could. <laughs> it's cheaper than living here, believe it or not. I mean, my apartment when I was going to school was 500 bucks a month, everything included. I was like three miles from, wow, from the beach. Yeah, I'd just steal that. There's, there's a lot of cheap living down there. I mean, there's so many like hotels and it just, there's so much housing that I think that's why it's just so inexpensive there. I think property taxes are lower too. Um, but yeah. Okay. Sounds like you guys are wrapping up. It was okay. nice talking to you, Brian. All right, you be good, all right? All right, yeah, I encourage you to just uh, like always be conscious of like what, uh, what the other officers and you know, conscious of your own actions, but also what others are doing because you know, the, the police is, there's a lot of authority, there's a lot of responsibility, and it's important that like that not be abused. You know, some people, and like, especially if it's called out internally, I think that's more important than if it's called out externally. Like it's, it shows a better example. But I especially check out the, the video from Nashua, because I mean, of course, some officers are already getting in trouble over it, which is, you know, it's good to hear that. But like this guy was trying to surrender and he may have done some bad stuff, but if you're at the point of trying to surrender and then somebody comes in and just starts beating on you, how is that going to make people feel about surrendering to the police in the future? Like, and that, that's my concern is like people feel like they won't be safe. But anyway, yeah, thank you for being a, a very like responsive and friendly person. I got another person.